This is getting real here. <laughs> May 7. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I've done this for seven whole days. <laughs> Uh, um, I want to talk about what inspires me. This is Saturday. No makeup. <laughs> Crazy hair day. Uh, paint shirt. I've got paint all over this t-shirt. Um, I am upstairs in my, um, office, prayer room. Uh, the guest bedroom is up here. Hi, Roberta. <laughs> Bless your heart. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what inspires me. And um, really, I hope uh, you just by watching and thinking about having things around you that inspire you. Uh, so I'm standing in front of this wonderful uh, poster that uh, my daughter gave me quite a few years ago now. When this song first came out, um, um, uh, and beside it is one of my collage uh, pieces that I've kept. I really have quite a few. Um, it's really interesting. I don't, I make decisions as I finish a work, whether I'm going to keep it a while or not. And um, I used to think that was really weird till I found out that that was pretty common around a um, in the lives of a lot of artists. Maybe because I need to live with it a while to um, think through what I was saying and what else needs to be said. So uh, many times a piece is part of a collection, well really all of them, end up being a part of a greater collection of maybe eight or 10, even 15 or 20 pieces. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of these and, um, let's see. Well, you'll get to see my whole prayer room cause I'll, I'm going to switch the camera. Um, so here's part of my prayer room, my sweet little blue and white. Isn't it wonderful? It really is. And then, um, this is my, uh, desk. And uh, this scripture, uh, or this song, uh, Spirit Lead Me, um, I just love this song and um, love the concept of it. And beside it is this uh, collage. And uh, this was maybe one of the first ones that I did with clay in it. So you can see it has this piece of clay it has leaves in it, uh, so it really does fit the other work that I have for sale right now in my studio um, because the leaves became images of, for me of prayer. And this one has Japanese paper in it. I have no idea what it says, but it came from a bag so it's probably just a shopping bag so it's probably the name of a company or something i uh, hope it's not anything bad but um i like the texture of it i like the image and um this is um about this this piece is called serenity and it was really about finding peace in uh, my, myself and um creating peace in my work and it's got a cool frame on it. Um, so, um, so what what creates um, inspiration for us? For me, it really is the things I have around me. I didn't always understand that, so I'm coming over here to show a couple more really interesting things. I love to buy other artists' work. I have this wonderful painting um which is here isn't it precious it's little it's um a painting by harlan hubbard who um probably haven't ever heard of um but i was 
greatly inspired by Harlan Hubbard. And this piece was on metal. He painted it on metal. And um, uh, Rush and I went on an adventure, uh, this is quite a few years ago now, uh, to go try to find Harlan Hubbard artwork after he passed away. And we have met a man who, um, ha who inherited all of uh, Harlan's work. And so he sold um, a few pieces for a lot of money, <laughs> I should say. Um, uh, but it was a, a great way to uh, support his family <laughs> and uh, his kids going to college. And anyway, uh, this one piece I bought, uh, not so much for the artwork, which is an interesting thing that I've been thinking about lately that um, sometimes people don't necessarily buy a painting just because um, they love that painting. Uh, sometimes it's much more than that. Uh, they connect with the artist. They connect with the story. They connect with um, what the overall uh, work of the artist. And that has really inspired me because uh, that's what I want uh, people to do. I want them to connect with not just the one piece of art that uh, they might uh, see that they want to own, but um, really the whole um, story of connecting art and prayer, of uh, the journey of discovery that I've been on my whole life as an artist. So um, that's really one of the reasons that I have the Harlan Hubbard piece hanging here in my uh, prayer room office so that I remember that. Um, on this table is um, a cute, well, cute little concrete dove that I painted white because he makes me happy. But this looks like a bunch of sunflower seeds, but you can hear them. They're not sunflower seeds. Um, they are porcelain, and each one is hand-painted to look like sunflowers. And um, why do I have that? I ordered them from China. <laughs> there is an incredible um, artist who um, wanted to help his uh, native country and there was uh, as most of you probably know a little bit about China but there was a village that their whole um, generations of generations had created uh, the finest porcelain uh, vases and um, all kinds of things out of porcelain for the very wealthy when people quit collecting that and the and uh, China went communist. These people were in a desperate situation. The artist went in, and he uh, the sunflower is a symbol that um, the communist government created to um, get people to understand that their job was to just be a little part of something much bigger. So. We're all just a little sunflower seed in the sunflower. Well, you and I don't really connect to that or understand that. But what the artist did then is he went in and uh, met with these amazing uh, people. And they started creating these porcelain sunflower seeds. And he created millions of them. And did an art installation where people walked on these porcelain sunflower seeds. Each one handmade, hand painted. The concept of it blew me away. I had to have some of them. <laughs> and they sell them in little bags of, I don't remember how many I bought, but I have a few to remind me uh, to think bigger and um, to dream big and his vision and uh, his work with these people 
was just so inspiring. Um, so there's another way that I'm inspired, just looking at the little sunflower seeds. Um, and then I have this wall. Um, I have these little places everywhere in my house with, oh, maybe um, art that I've made, other people's art, um, work that I've done. Uh, and each of those places are an opportunity for me to stop and really um, be encouraged by what I've done in the past. Again, pieces that I've kept. Um, this one is, uh, well, this isn't interesting. <laughs> oh, getting real here. Um, the Goldust Bible, if you ever heard of I don't know any, it doesn't matter if you've heard of it or not, but anyway, that's the gold dust Bible that produces gold dust. And, um, so I have it on a table and, um, above it is this piece that I've uh, decided to hang up here. It's, um, really the next direction of work I want to do. And this was my favorite one from this series that I did on lightning and thunder. Really? Of course you can't produce thunder in a two-dimensional painting, but you sure can lightning, um, of atmosphere changes. And uh, this was my favorite one of the ones that I did, that I kept. And that is a series that I really have this desire to, to finish um, or to start again, to re, uh, re, re dig that well, honestly. Um, and I have one more little corner to show, and then I'm going to jump off. But um, this wonderful quote by the Velveteen Rabbit. In the Velveteen Rabbit, if you ever read the book, um, is um, when um, the, the question was asked from the Velveteen Rabbit, asked the skin horse, when do you become real? And um, I love that understanding of when you become real is um, you can't be the kind of person that um, has sharp edges or has to be carefully cared for. Uh, generally, by the time you are real, m most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out and you get loose in the joints and shabby. But these things do not matter at all because once you are real, you cannot be ugly, except to people who don't understand. Oh, don't you just love that quote? <laughs> I love it. And it's a great reminder to me of our goal is, um, oh, and I have it on this wonderful table um, with all of these little treasures photographs of the grandkids and me in front of our our pink house and this huge crown that I love to I leave it out all year it's really Christmas decoration that <laughs> I just live with it so what's the point uh <laughs> yes I'm going uh, live every day and I'm talking about art and prayer and um to make art we have to be inspired. And honestly, uh, don't you believe that all of us need to be inspired all the time? I mean, to keep going as a Christian. That's why we read the Word. It isn't just um, to learn. It isn't to build your knowledge base. It is to be inspired to live like Jesus, to be like Jesus, to, to do the next thing like Him, to love the next person like Him. And... and um, and honestly, creating art is that as well, that we um, we are inspired by the world around us. Of course, artists for centuries have been inspired by nature, and I am, and I'll do a, I'll, I'll do a walk through my garden in a few days. I need to weed one more <laughs> flower bed before I show it, but um, so here I am upstairs in my prayer room, and just uh, showing what inspires me to to pray, to believe God, um, to go after the things that um, I've never seen before. 
And so today, uh, one of the things that's been exciting for Rush and I is we've been on our uh, on the iPad watching our granddaughters compete in the New Mexico uh, track meet, the state meet. And um, our daughter, our granddaughter Rayleigh won the 800 and the mile. And uh, she, uh, she broke the state record for the 800 which is just incredible as a freshman in high school. And, uh, and our granddaughter Logan was on um, a, uh, a, a team that I think they came in third, uh, but she got to compete and now their school it has won the whole meet. Uh, so she got to be on a winning team. And I'm just as proud of Logan for hanging in there even though uh, running isn't her main thing, and um, but but she did it. She um, she got in there and kept going. And Rayleigh uh, ran the 800 and broke the state record. And then she uh, ran the hurdles and fell, and got up and finished the race and came in fifth. And um, right after that, it wasn't. Uh, 30 minutes that she had to run the mile and she got out there and won it um, Talk about inspired What keeps you going when it's hard? Uh, when you fall down You have to have obviously like her amazing people around you and things around you that keep you going so um, I just pray that you find those things in your life um, around you and those people. I pray especially for people to have people around them who cheer them on, who um, who inspire them for more. There is so much more, and um, we we get to enjoy this incredible life that we have. And here's our, this is it. This is our only chance for faith to do what we've never seen before, to go after those things we've never done before um, for us, whatever that is, uh, because we won't need faith in heaven. This is it. And um, so I, I pray that each person is encouraged that watches this and that you're inspired and find those things around you that inspire you and give you a sense of accomplishment and hope and a, a reason to get up and keep going. God bless you all.